guys welcome back to the channel eric here today we're going to be doing another breakdown coming at you guys all right for those of you who don't know me my name is eric and i'm on a mission to make sure that this mcas is easy as possible for you guys because i understand what it's like to be a pre-med okay, you got a lot on your plate so this mcat should be easy and it is easy and i'm going to show you how it's easy okay so i'm going to show you guys exactly how to read through the passage how to pick the best answer um how to not get lost in the details you know how to make it make sense the timing everything that you guys need to know i'm going to show you guys how to do it in these passage breakdowns all right so as always guys go ahead and do the passage first and write down your answers on like a separate sheet of paper or something first and then watch this video okay so i'm going to scroll through this passage pause it whenever you need to okay read through it and write down your answers okay so this is the first question this is question 19 this is question 20 this is question 21 this is question 22 and i think that's it yeah that's it okay so write down your answers compare it see where you went wrong see where you went right and let's break this down for you guys okay the re the pace that i read this passage is the pace that you guys should be going at as well all right so let's begin. WNT proteins are secreted signal molecules that act as local mediators to control many aspects of development. WNTs are unusual as secreted proteins in that they have a fatty acid chain covalently attached to their end terminus, which increases their binding to cell surfaces. All right. This struck out at me, so I'm going to highlight it. All right. Why is because they're telling me, okay, WNTs are unusual as secreted proteins in that they blah, blah, blah. Okay. So whenever the MCAT tells you that something's unusual or they say, hey, you know, this protein does this, but unlike other proteins, this protein does this, you know, whenever they give you that sort of sentence structure, always highlight it because it's going to be something important and it's something that they're going to ask in the question. Okay. WNTs can activate the intracellular signaling pathway, the WNT beta catenin pathway. The WNT beta catenin pathway pathway acts by regulating the proteolysis of the protein beta catenin, which functions in gene regulation. Okay, what does this do? Regulates the proteolysis. What does it do? What does it function in? Gene regulation. Cool. An experiment was performed to test the effect a beta catenin phosphorylation on the rate of degradation. They told us exactly what the experiment's going to be about. All right, nothing too hard here, nothing too crazy. This is all making sense here. They want to see the effect of phosphorylation on the rate of degradation. Does it degrade faster when it's phosphorylated? Does it not degrade faster when it's phosphorylated? What happens? Let's see. Okay. And here they introduce the experiment. They're always going to introduce the experiment. Mouse cell cultures were treated with radioactive P-labeled phosphate ions in order to determine if the degraded beta catenin was phosphorylated or not. Okay, you guys should know and be familiar with, you know, phosphate labeled, uh, sulfur labeled, um, thymine labeled, anything that's labeled radioactively, you guys should be aware of why they do that. Okay, it's to trace what's going on in the experiment. All right, so this makes sense why they would do that. At various intervals, five milliliters of the cell solution were collected and fractionated with the aid of centrifugation to separate cytoplasmic contents from cellular nuclei. The separated mixtures were then assayed for the presence of 32 phosphate. Assay results are summarized in figure one. Okay, so how did they do this? They centrifuged to separate the contents from the cytoplasm from the nucleus. Okay, they're centrifuging it. Why are they centrifuging it? What does centrifugation do? It separates organelles. Okay, that's that's how they did this experiment here. All right, and these are the results. We don't look at the figure. We don't try to interpret this figure yet. Only when the question asks, you go ahead and look at the figure. If you spend your time trying to analyze the figure when you didn't even get to the question yet, you're going to waste your time. All right, and sometimes these questions don't even ask about the figure, okay? You can read the description here. All right, so results of radioactive phosphate assay. Radioactivity is normalized through protein total protein content in the sample. Cool. All right. The degradation of cytoplasmic beta catenin depends on a large protein degradation complex, which binds beta catenin and keeps it out of the nucleus while promoting its degradation. All right. 
This is how it gets degraded. Binds beta catenin and keeps it out of the nucleus while promoting its degradation. Intact beta catenin accumulates and translocates to the nucleus. All right, so we know what's happening here. The intact is in the nucleus. The non-phosphorated, that's what intact means. We don't have any phosphorylation or anything on it. So the non-phosphorated beta catenin goes to the nucleus. All right. Once in the nucleus, beta catenin binds to its receptors, displaces the co-repressor Groucho, and acts as a co-activator to stimulate the transcription of WNT target genes. All right. When we're talking about this, these details here, all right, it's telling me that it's going to go bind to receptor, displace Groucho, act as a co-activator. Okay, I want to know what's the end goal here. All right, beta catenin. Yeah, it does all these little things, but what's the bigger picture? Well, the bigger picture is that it stimulates the transcription of WNT target genes. All right. In the absence of WNT signaling, most of a cell's beta catenin is located at cell cell junctions where it is associated with cadherins, which are transmembrane adhesion proteins. All right, that's that makes sense. The beta catenin in these junctions helps link the cadherin to the actin cytoskeleton. How does it do it? Actin cytoskeleton. Any beta catenin not associated with cadherins is rapidly degraded in the cytoplasm. All right. All right. That's pretty much it. And they give us a figure here. Not too hard at all. Not too hard at all. All right. They want to see, hey, all right. If it's phosphorated, does it get degraded faster or slower? All right. Then this is their experiment. And then they kind of go into the detail of how it gets degraded, what happens, what's the point of it, what does it stimulate, all that stuff. All right. And they give us a figure here. Not too hard at all, guys. Not too hard at all. Let's go to the questions now. And also, guys, I always mention that usually it's the passage that has these like crazy names and details that can kind of trip you up a little bit. This is a little I get that the passage can be a little like, whoa, so many details. Whoa, how am I you know, supposed to keep track of everything? That makes sense. OK, this can be a little tricky, but the question is where it's easy. The questions are easy. This whole here is a little difficult. So you got to really zone in here. All right. Which of the following is most likely? to be the precursor of the group found linked to the end terminus of a WNT protein. Well, what did they tell us? They told us that WNTs are unusual as secreted protein, that they have a fatty acid chain covalently attached to their end terminus, which increases their binding to cell surfaces. So a fatty acid chain, you should know how a fatty acid chain looks like. Okay. It's an alkyl chain, a lot of CH2s, and then it's going to have a carboxylic acid group at the end. That's a fatty acid. So this is NH2 is repeated with a carboxylic acid group. So no, this one, it has an OCH3. This is, you have a alkyl chain or an R, R group, an O and another R group. That is an ether. That's an ether. Okay. That's not a fatty acid. We're looking for a carboxylic acid at the end. This is just, this is not it. We don't even have a carboxylic acid group here. And then D, we do have a carboxylic acid group, the COH, and we have that long tail chain. Therefore, D is a correct answer. All right. And I'm going to go after this and see, you know, what I got right and what I got wrong. Because I do this live for you guys. <laughs> like, I'm I'm doing this confident in live. Because that's how you should be taking the MCAT too. You should be confident in your answer choices. You should think, yep, this is right. Yep, I got it right. Okay, just like that. 32 phosphate has a very short half-life of 14 days and decays into sulfur as shown below. Okay, 32 phosphate, 15 becomes 16, and an electron is ejected. Okay, this nuclear reaction is an example of, okay, this is straight content review, guys. Alpha decay, no, we need that helium there. All right, I don't see any helium, so I'm gonna get rid of alpha decay. Beta plus decay. All right, here's a way to remember it. I mean, this is the way I remember it. It's kind of tricky, all right? In beta plus, the Z is going to go down by one. And in beta minus, the Z is going to go up by one. I think of it as like opposite. Okay, so beta plus, Z goes down. Beta minus, Z goes up. So beta plus, the Z would have to go down. And in this case, the Z goes up. We go from 15 to 16. Therefore, 
this is wrong. Strike through. That's what we said was wrong. Beta minus the K. All right. Beta minus the K, the Z goes up. The Z is the proton number here. So the Z goes up, which is correct. 15 to 16 goes up by one. So this is the correct answer. And positron emission, that's pretty much the same thing as beta plus decay. All right, so this is a classic test taking strategy here, guys. Okay, if you have answer choices and two of the answer choices mean very, very similar things, they're both wrong. 100% proven they're both wrong. You can't have two correct answers. All right, especially in the MCAT. Since these are similar, they're both wrong. Bam, eliminate B and D because they're similar. All right. And this is not the only time that this happens. This happens actually, I wouldn't say like all the time, but it does happen a lot. Okay. So next one, a scientist concludes that the phosphorylated beta catenin is the form that is degraded. Why do the experimental results support this conclusion? Okay. Experimental results. So we go to the experiment and look at the results of the experiment. Okay. Hang on to the words, guys. Look at the words. Figure one here. This is the experimental results. All right. A, the levels of nuclear 32 phosphate decrease faster and remain lower than 32 phosphate levels in the cytoplasm. Okay, let's check. Here is the nucleus. Nucleus is light gray, cytoplasm is dark gray. All right, let's look at the X and Y axis. Always, always look at that. It's very important. You have time here. And you have fractional 32 phosphate signal and AU. Okay. So let's see. Nucleus in lesser time, we have way, way less uh, 32 phosphate. So this is telling me that it decreased way faster nucleus than the cytoplasm. All right. Cytoplasm, it took it a whole hour, a whole 60 minutes. For the nucleus, it only took us like. 50 minutes. That's it. So obviously nucleus decreases faster and it remains lower. Okay. Look, it's always remaining lower. Nucleus is lower. Nucleus is lower. Nucleus is lower. Therefore a is proven. I like it. Now, does it answer the question though? Okay. Does it answer the question? All right. Scientists conclude that the phosphorylated beta catenin is a form that is degraded. All right. In the nucleus it's intact the beta catenin. All right. So let's keep going. Hold on. My phone is ringing. I'm going to shut it off right now. Okay. So I like how this is proven by the figure the figure does say a is correct, but I don't really think it answers the question a hundred percent. All right. But it is proven though. So we're going to leave it here. B the levels of nuclear 32 phosphate increase over time while cytoplasmic Levels decrease. This is not shown in the figure, so this is wrong. Okay, remember, whatever the MCAT tells you, whatever is shown in the figure, you go with it. You go with it no matter what. Forget everything else. Okay. <laughs> C. Cytoplasmic and nuclear levels both decrease over time. This is true. They both decrease over time. However, it doesn't answer the question on like, hey, which form is the one that's degraded? Okay, they want to find a difference here. All right, this is just telling us that they're both decreasing. This is a weak answer, very, very weak. This is a stronger answer because it's more specific and there's more evidence pointing towards it. So I'm going to keep sticking with A. I'm going to strike through this one. D, cytoplasmic levels of 32. No, they don't remain constant at all. Okay, you can see that they both decrease. All right, so through process elimination, I'm going to go with A. Okay, A is the strongest and most supported and most specific. Now, does it answer the question a thousand percent? And eh, not really. Okay. In my opinion, not really, but you know, there's going to be times where you take the MCAT and you're going to have to decide and be like, Hey, this is the best answer. Okay. You have to choose the best answer. That's how you win. You choose the best answer. So this is the best answer. Boom. Next one in vivo. Phosphate molecules utilize proton coupled transport mechanisms to enter the cell. Which statement explains why this is necessary? Um, phosphate is hydrophilic. Yes. Okay. It's charged. If we have something that's charged <clears throat> like ions, they're going to need some type of transporter, a channel protein to get inside the cell. Hydrophobic. It is not hydrophobic. Okay. It's not hydrophobic. So this is wrong. The cell membrane is hydrophilic. 
No, what? <laughs> the solid membrane is not hydrophilic. It's hydrophobic. Okay. The secondary active transport mechanism conserves ATP. Active transport. When you see active, that utilizes ATP. So this is wrong. This is wrong. Answer is A here. Bam. All right. Just like that. Now, I'm going to go check to see if what we answered was correct. So here are the answers, guys. I haven't looked at this before. So let's see. All right. For 19, we chose, yeah, we chose D. That is our fatty acid. And there's the explanation if you guys want. Okay. Let's look at the next. And then we chose beta minus decay. All right. That's the explanation if you guys would like. Again, beta plus decay, Z goes down by one. Beta minus decay, Z goes up by one. It's the opposite. Okay. That's how I like to think about it. If you have a better mnemonic for it, just comment it down below. You know, help each other out, guys. Question 21. Okay, we got this one correct. All right, and there's the explanation if you guys want to read it, okay? So through process elimination, I eliminated B, C, and D. All right, and as you can see, this one, a lot of people chose C. Only half the students got this right. So this is a pretty hard question, all right? You guys have to chop out answer choices. As soon as you smell, I'm going to curse, you know, even though I'm not supposed to curse on this channel, I'm going to curse for you guys. As soon as you smell bullshit or anything like that in answer choice, you ax it out. Get rid of it. That's it. Boom. Have confidence in your answers that you were saying, hey, go away. Go away. Like, this is not right. Have confidence in that. Cross it out. Don't double think. Boom. Ax out B, C, and D. And we're left with A. And A was correct. And let's see the next one. A is correct. All right. Phosphate is hydrophilic. All right. And this is the explanation, guys. All right. So, guys, if you guys are wanting to work one-on-one -on -one with me or if you guys want to be, or want to join MCAT University, guys, it is a fully loaded program. Okay. It has me in there. You have other students working in there as well. You have, I'm going to hold your hand and make sure that you get the MCAT score. Okay. I've gotten many, many students to hit their target score. So, if you guys are interested, hit the link in the comment section. Okay. Schedule an interview with me. And I will see if we're a good fit to work together. And I will see if you're a good fit to join MCAT University to hit your freaking target score. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe. You already know how it goes. Follow me on Instagram. If you guys have any questions, you know, I always respond there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.